Grab your coffee, got mine right here, I'm a weirdo, and grab your popcorn, it's time for Raven's Heart. Using music, video, and comics all together to share the gospel and glorify Jesus may sound a little bit unusual. However, in this day and age, Jesus is asking his people, his church, to reclaim everything and to use it to glorify him so that the gospel can be heard. Tonight's guest, Nathaniel, from a band known as Tomorrow's End, is doing exactly what I was just talking about. They are not just a band, but they're using video and comic books and magazines to share the gospel with people who might not necessarily set foot in a church. And in the words of the great theologian, Larry the Cucumber from Veggie Tales, this evening's edition is going to be a multimedia extravaganza. We are back, and with us this evening is Nathaniel. And before we talk to Nathaniel, if you are watching us on YouTube Live, if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so that you can keep up on Raven's Heart notifications. We do air every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Nathaniel, welcome to Raven's Heart. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here tonight. I love it. You've got the whole setup. You've got like the the whole band in the back there. Are they real or what are we looking at back there, brother? Yeah, you're looking at uh, mannequins. Um, just we try to do again. So when I, uh, I'm being blessed to get to do these podcasts and interviews and even some uh, just many different forms of, I guess, chats and stuff with people. And we're a very visual band, as you can tell, and visual project. And I just figured, you know, this hopefully gets people's attention and makes people say, what is that about? And then if you keep on uncovering it layer upon layers, like peeling an onion, um, there is, it all points to Christ and it's all being used to try to get people back into the Bible. Uh, and that that's really what everything's about. That is really, really cool. We're going to dive into all the details of this because people, you got to trust me, this is a complex project. This is not just a guy and a bunch of his friends jamming in the garage for Jesus. This is pretty extensive. But before we talk about the music, you have a testimony of healing. Can you share that testimony with us to encourage our listeners and our viewers? I definitely. Um, actually, I have two. Um, I'm 36 now. I just turned 36 back in April. And uh, when I was 17 years old, I was actually diagnosed with bone cancer. And uh, I was not in any way, shape or form a Christian. I actually had been turned off. I'd been invited to people's church numerous times. And I actually went and uh, I would go, would go to the church and they would speak about one thing. They would act a certain way. And then when we would be outside of the church, and this is even sometimes the preachers, the preacher's wives, like uh, wh whoever, they would not be showing the same fruit that they did just inside that building when everybody was watching. So I was turned off by it. And I was like, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. So at 17, as a senior in high school, I sat there and I was like, you know, I just was I was just being worldly. I was just doing what I wanted to do at the time. I thought I was going to be a professional wrestler one day because I loved I grew up loving wrestling and stuff like that. And uh, anyway, so I was working out and doing all this stuff. And I thought I must have hurt myself working out. Had a big knot lump coming up, come up on my left knee. And what happened was I went to the doctor. They said, oh, you probably just bumped it. So it swelled up, went back the second time. They said, yeah, probably still. It, it's got bigger, but sometimes that happens. Then I went back the th third week in a row and they said, whoa, that's triple the size. That that might be a problem. They send me for an MRI. They say, actually, this is at, at, later that night. They called me after I did the MRI. They said, this is actually a tumor. They couldn't tell me if it was cancerous. They didn't know if it was malignant or non-malignant. So I live in Cleveland, Tennessee, still to this day. And I did then. And so they had to send me to Birmingham, Alabama to have a biopsy to see if it was cancerous or not. And uh, so I went 
and they did the biopsy. It's about three and a half hours away from where I live. My parents took me and my grandmother. We drive back later that day because, you know, no need to stay in a hotel if you don't have to, I guess. So we drove drove back home. And as we pull in the gate and get into the house, literally, as soon as we get into the house, the phone rings, the cell phone. And they tell my parents and they say, it, it is cancer. It's called osteosarcoma. Not a lot of people live through it. It's kind of a rare cancer. It sometimes appears in just teenagers for no reason or young adults. And there ain't nothing you did to get it. It's just there. And, um, you know, we're going to have to tr start figuring out a plan to treat this. And so my parents, you know, were overwhelmed. They uh, kind of, you know, we all talk about it for a minute. Then they go in, in the other room. I sit on the couch, my parents' couch with my grandmother. And I literally um, start talking to her and stuff. And I was like, so you know, cause she always told me about Christ and stuff. And, um, I was like, so if I really repent, if I really choose him, even all this time I've been against Christianity and stuff and said many <laughs> things about it too. I was like, he'll still forgive me. And she said, yes. And I, she led me to Christ right then and there. And I accepted Christ into my heart that very night. And I haven't looked back since. And I tell people all the time, I was 17, thought my whole life was ahead of me. And then God, you know, something else happened, showed me something else. And I'm actually grateful for that because if I wouldn't have got sick, I, first of all, might not be here for another reason, just because I was out being sinful and living a life I wanted to live. And that's never going to lead anywhere good. And second of all, through that sickness, I learned and I came close to him. And literally the moment I accepted Christ into my heart, I truly had more peace at that moment than any time before in my young life. I didn't I didn't have the same worries. I was almost anorexic at the time because I told you I was working out and stuff, trying to look a certain way. And I was really body conscious and all these things. And as soon as I got saved, like it just dawned on me, why am I worrying about like putting this above anything else? When again, if, if I'm saved and, and I just accepted Christ, guess what? My spiritual life is what I need to work on. I'm not saying that you can't try to eat right or stuff like that, but I'm saying that needs to become less in the eyes of, you know, what I'm seeking. I need to seek Christ. And um, I started, I realized right when I accepted him too, that I let all these people turn me off to a perfect Christ when in essence, I may, you know, they may not have even had him or truly known him themselves might be why they wasn't showing him in their lives or they could have just had bad days, whatever. But regardless, I needed to make sure I judge Christ solely on him and his message solely on that. And it's perfect. And if you judge Christ on Christ, you'll never go wrong. So uh, anyway, so that was 17. I went through chemos for two, about two years and had to have uh, my tumor removed from my knee and I have a rod in my leg and they replaced my knee. I still have the kneecap, but everything else is replaced. And then I have a rod that goes into the bottom of my leg to like anchor it. So I have a rod in the t top and bottom. And uh, I went through two years of chemos, Adrian Ice and Cis Platinum and Methotrexate, sick and stuff. And I had really bad days and stuff, but I always knew Christ was going to get me through it. And people used to say, what's wrong with you? They say, why are you being so you know positive and stuff? And I'm like, it's not, I'm not, it ain't nothing I'm doing. I truly feel that. I feel that in my spirit. And so, so anyways, uh, I had this idea back then, even of tomorrow's end, that's when like the concept was around even back from when I was 17, and there would had been start tried to be starts and stuff like that throughout. And then I'm but I met my wife and um, you know, we got married and, and we uh, started, you know, just uh, starting getting into the word even more together because I was still a young Christian, baby Christian. So I was still trying to learn what's right, what's wrong. And every time I would start something, I was I started realizing, wait a second, the reason this isn't working is because I not being a jerk or nothing to people like that do this, but I didn't know enough to go out. I could go out and witness uh, like witness and give my testimony. Right. But I didn't need to be going out trying to teach or trying to explain things that are still well beyond what I could even, you know, explain. And that's why, you know, it's when Christ tells us to go make disciples of all nations, that doesn't mean just tell them that he's that he's real and that, you know, believe in him. It's meaning make sure that you're trained and, and you understand what to what to say right from. I always tell people discernment is not knowing right from wrong. It's knowing right from almost right. <laughs> hey, that's a good point. I like that. I look back at when I was first saved and I knew that I was called to some form of ministry and I ran off to seminary. And I look back and I remember some of the teachings that I taught and some of the messages that I preached. And I am glad they don't exist anymore. Uh, they were, I knew enough to be dangerous. That, that was about it. So really what happened is God healed you inside spiritually first and then healed your body. Yes. 
And uh, so I, I was extremely blessed. Uh, like I said, not even a lot of people even live through that spe uh, specific cancer. And if they do, they usually have to lose their whole leg. Um, like I, that was a, that was an option. But I said, well, let's try the I really believe God's with me on this. And I said, let's try that. And they said, I don't know about it. They said, you might have, you know, it, it very well may spread. And I was very blessed. I said, well, I said, let's try this first. I said, and then we'll see. And, and I've been blessed and I've been cancer free for 17 years. And I actually don't have any problems from the cancer. Uh, I just still have ever since 17. I've had medical sometimes complications from time to time because of the chemotherapy. They was very oh. harsh. On and so I actually developed uh, the last six years ago, spinal and cervical stenosis in my spine. And I've never been in a like car wreck. I've never fell down a flight of stairs or don't have any family history or anything like that of, of like a bad, like, you know, bones or anything, but just mm -hmm. from those uh, chemos and stuff, they stay with you. And, uh, you know, I prayed about it and prayed about it kind of like Paul did when he's asking God, you know, to take, you know, his troubles away to a degree. And he's, he says, I, you know, I asked three times. And sometimes we have to realize when we ask God, guess what? He always answers. Sometimes it's just not always the answer that we're looking for. And sometimes the answer is no. And when it is, though, that's to, to greater glorify him. And because if everybody's just running around with perfect health and stuff, uh, uh, people's going to say, well, of course, they're glorifying God. Look, they're driving, you know, they're driving nice cars. They got perfect health. They're, you know, they're great. So whenever you're having issues and you don't have a lot of cash and you don't have necessarily the perfect, like, you know, health per se, like physical health, but when your spiritual health is there, that's what really impacts people. But uh, yeah, so six years ago, I got diagnosed with spinal and cervical stenosis. And it was a very strange time because, and a very actually blessed time, because that's when we started, like really starting to get the wheels on this ministry and try to get it going. Uh, started out with the music. And then uh, we start, we, we played in 22 states. And uh, and that was after the diagnosis of the broken neck and the uh, stenosis. And they said, you're going to probably have to have this in a couple months. And I told my wife, I said, because she's the drummer and, uh, partner in all of this. Without this, I couldn't do any of it. She helps me tremendously with this. Uh, everybody that's in ministry, I mean, if you're doing this, you need a good support system. You need a good wife. You need a good helper. And she 100%, everything I'm bad at, she's good at. So that's good. Um, you don't ever want to see my spelling. That's why she edits and, and my sister-in-law really look over these comics but when we put them out because I have the ideas, but if I spell it, uh, good luck reading it. <laughs> so, uh, but, but anyways, yeah, so I, I got diagnosed with the, with this, the nose is back six years ago. And so finally this year after six years, um, it finally just, that bill came due, so to speak. And I really felt God was saying it's time. So I went in for a five level fusion back in May and I went in and they said, it was going to do four levels from the front. And I don't know if the audience can see, but, uh, there you go. Yep, there it is. Yeah. It's very yeah. visible. And I literally just got the uh, neck brace off like two weeks ago. But anyways, back in May, I went in and it was going to do four levels from the front and one level from the back on the second day. It's going to be a two day operation. And it's pretty, you know, that's pretty much all your vertebrae in your neck. And it's like, they're going to all be fused. That's just how bad your neck is. So he gets in there on the day of surgery and he is supposed to only be, by the way, a like one to two inch incision. And as you can tell, it's not. He had some trouble uh, when he got in there. He said it's a lot worse than we anticipated, than even the scan showed. He said, so I only could do three levels. So tomorrow, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to wait in the hospital and I'll do two levels in the back tomorrow instead of one. And I said, OK. So he said, I'm going to send you for an MRI to make sure it's, you know, that he can see everything. So about an hour, he's standing for the MRI. I'm waiting in the in the ICU with my wife. And he comes in there and he's shaking his head and smiling kind of. And he shows me his phone. It's a pink phone. Uh, could have been his. Could have been, you know, his wife's. I don't know. But he, he just shows it to me. And he it's a real shiny pink phone and stuff. And it's, it was it made me laugh just because it's like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there trying to see. And it's a real sparkly phone. And he says, hey, look at this. And I'm like, OK, awesome. He said, ain't this good news? And I said. Yeah, yeah, sure. What is it? Because I mean, I could tell it's vertebrae, but I don't know. Um, I don't exactly know what, you know, what, it, what he's showing me. And he says, look at this. He said, when I was literally just in your neck and I told you I couldn't get to that fourth level because it was so bad, I'll have to do two levels tomorrow. He said, some something's happened. He said, between when I so patched you up and when you got that MRI to where it is fixed now. He said, you don't have to, he said, you don't have to stay here. And tomorrow you don't have to get those next two levels fused. He said, the pressure is off the spinal cord. He said, there's, I had to look this up. He said, there's no record of it, of this really happening. He said one time, maybe back in the eighties or something, somebody documented something kind of similar, but it's, it wasn't the same thing. He said, I have no explanation. He said, but we're going to take it. And I said, well, I have an explanation. He said, I give all the glory and all the credit to Christ. I said, no offense, doc. I said, I appreciate everything you did. I'm sure you did a great job. 
But I said, I give all the glory to Christ because this is a miracle. And he said, oh, he said, yeah, he said, the Lord must have a plan for you because he said, this is really something. So he said, all you have to do is stay in here one night. And if you're good tomorrow, you go home. And it's like even then. So the next day he comes in there and I'm already feeling like a very uh, having not not the pain I had. And I'm walking around and I'm getting out of bed. And he says, what are you doing? And I said, I said, well, you told me I could do what, what I felt. He said, I didn't assume you was going to feel like doing anything. He said, get back in bed. And because uh, he said, I said, what can I do? He said, whatever you feel like. And so the next day he comes in there and he says, I'm trying to release you. But he said, don't hurt yourself before you get out of the, you know, before I discharge you. So, but anyways, I, I'm extremely blessed and it has been a blessing. And also there was a fear because he had to move my vocal cords over. And sometimes oh, I wow. sing and, and sometimes the way I sing and stuff, um, like, uh, it just, sometimes I sing higher. Sometimes I do a little falsetto and stuff. And he said, you might not, you just have to sing low from now on. He said, it just very well may not be there. Cause a lot of people that go through this camp within one week, I was already sometimes, you know, probably driving my wife crazy around the house, testing stuff with a guitar on my lap. And <laughs> I said, Hey, I can still do it. And she says, okay, great. She said, but stop please. <laughs> because, she, because at one point I was singing and literally like a the, the cut kind of like it's sort of like blood coming out on my sutures and stuff and i she said that's mm. probably not good and he he said yeah but so he he learned quickly to quit telling me do what i feel like and just he said just so he started giving me a list do this do this but but again god's god has healed me through this and i'm extremely blessed and, and grateful and that's Dang. why i want to do these interviews because again the reason if we're healed, we can't be quiet about it. Again, like the scripture says, you know, nobody puts a, you don't put a cover over a light or over no. a candle. It doesn't shine its light. So I'm not saying this for my glory. I've not done anything. It's literally all Christ. And I am so glad that you shared your testimony with us because Jesus still does heal today. Uh, it's not just something that happened in Bible times. He does it. He does it miraculously. I can't believe the doctor had no explanation. I mean, that is just a miracle. That's exactly what that is when they can't explain it. And it's not like your body just readjusted. Did you feel anything like before he found that going on that was maybe different? Did you have a dream or anything like that? Or, you know? No dream. I just... um the weird thing is, like I said, I've, I was told this back in 2000, at the end of 2015, so almost seven, it's about six and a half years ago, really. It was like November 2015, and he said, he said, actually, your neck's literally like broke at a spot, and your spinal cord is literally, you have stenosis so bad in your cervical spine, and um, so I was like... I was like, I just really feel more this like to give into this at this moment. Uh, not, but wasn't being like a uh, pride for anything saying I got things to do. No, it was, I really felt God calling me to do things. And I was, so I told Haley, that's my wife. And I said, you know what? And she was, uh, to her credit, very good wife and very blessed to have her because she's scared to death when you tell, you know, when your husband's been told he's going to have to have a neck operation. And then no, you say, absolutely. you know what? We're going to go start traveling and actually going out and playing all these different states. And, and I'm going to strap her <laughs> guitar around and we're going to go travel, do all this stuff. And because he told me if I would have got rear ended or any, any type of thing, even at 15 miles per hour, I could either be paralyzed or killed. Yeah. And so when you tell people that they're like, oh, you, you was just an idiot. Now, it really wasn't that. And I'm not promoting people if they're given a diagnosis to do that. I'm saying I was literally just trying to be obedient. God was opening doors and, and making ways for things. And I told her, I said, whenever he quits opening the doors, we will reevaluate and do that. But I said at this time and she she followed me and we did it together and we met other people along the way who started doing it with us. And my, my point of all that was I felt for six and a half years it wasn't time. And right before this, uh, I had the surgery. I felt I just looked at her one day and I said, you know what? I really feel like God's saying it's time. She says, what's different? And, and I've had, I had real bad pain for a while and numbness in my fingers, dropping stuff and sometimes even tripping and falling. And none of that was the sign. though. It was just <laughs> literally I felt it in my spirit. And I was like, you know what? It's time. It just I just knew it. And uh, so as so I went through with it and I, I was extremely blessed. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so much better shape now than I was even before the surgery and stuff. And, and not only that, but spiritually, even like God has blessed me with the ability to like, um, I didn't have to, t I only had to take like pain medication for maybe two days and stuff. And I got to come off that and people said, what are you nuts? And, and I'm not trying to prove a point saying you're macho. Right. I don't need it. No, it's just, I didn't need it. And if you don't need it, why take it? So um, again, God is just, he's I always tell people, if you are really being obedient and seeking Christ, guess what's going to happen? No matter what you go through, how bad it is, you will be able to endure it because it's actually him that he, he will actually carry it for you. We just have to make sure we're giving it to him and that we're doing what we're supposed to. If we try to do it on our own, we're going to fail every time. But if we give it to him, 
he will guide us through it. I mean, that's why how Paul was able to do all the stuff he did and all the disciples, you know, when they're, when they're persecuted and stuff, it's because they are relying on Christ and not the, their own strength. Yeah. And what I hear from you is that you were walking by faith and not by circumstance and yes. you are walking through your healing. Well, let's talk about this project that you have okay. called Tomorrow's End. Uh, it's more than just a band. You referred to it as a Christian music art project. What is a, I've never heard of that before. What is a Christian music art project? Well, yeah. Um, yeah. We call it a Christian art music project or camp for short. And the reason for that is because, um, we, I, I learned again, right after I got that diagnosis, we was blessed to get to perform in 22 different States. And we was just a band at the time we'd go around performing and stuff. And we, I, I guess I had noticed for years, uh, you know, the story in acts where people are, you know, at Pentecost where the Holy spirit comes down and they sp start speaking in different languages. And, uh, I was like, you know what? The Holy spirit gave them the gift to reach the people that was not even in their language. And I, you start looking around in culture and stuff and don't get me wrong. People still read, people still read novels, people still listen to the radio and all these things, but we are a more visual culture. Like if you look at streaming and stuff like Netflix, Hulu, um, HBO Max, all these different platforms. And you start seeing that we are a very visual culture. People's always looking at their phone and seeing people's pictures and updates, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And I was like, you know what? We're a very visual culture. So I want to make sure we're putting the message out there in a visual medium to where people can, if they it, regard, you know, they might not hear it at first, but maybe if they see something that draws them to, to it, uh, take a second look and say, what's that? And then they'll start looking deeper and they'll see the message of Christ. And, and to get started on that, um, what this re actually is representing is over here to my right <laughs> is the first character. It's the X character. And uh, before I say this, Jesus taught a lot in parables and he taught a lot in his time period in farming parables or you get the parable of the 10 virgins or all these different parables that people understood in that time. Well, we live in a culture that's into comic book movies, um, you know, science fiction, all these different things, you know, they're into entertainment and they're into stories that sometimes have messages and generally they're not biblical. Every now and then you'll run across one, even a broken clock's right twice a day. But in general... <laughs> You don't really see, you know, Christian messages in in those things very much. And the point is, is putting it in a way. It, this is our parable, so to speak. Uh, and so over here is the X character. He has something over his mouth. A lot of people say, well, that's a COVID mask. Well, back when we started, it was not. It was just <laughs> <laughs> it was just a mask that was over the mouth. And it's got a, the X on it. And what it's saying is we live in a world that does not want you to talk about God. Uh, the next character, the I character, which is portrayed by my wife. She plays drums in the music portion and helps him with so many things behind the scenes and everything else. I couldn't do it without her. She is the eye character and she's got something over her eyes and it's saying we live in a world that doesn't want you to see God. Uh, the next character right behind me is the character I portray, the T character. And uh, it's got a bandana over the ears saying we live in a world that doesn't even want you to hear the truth about Christ. But guess what? He, it's a T character, you know, a cross. You're supposed to be a shining light for Christ if you're a Christian. So it doesn't matter if you ain't supposed to talk about him, see him or hear him. You're supposed to do it anyways because you're a Christian. Like Christ says, count the cost before you follow me. Understand that you have a responsibility as a Christian, which brings us to the next character, the S character, who's portrayed uh, by my best friend. And uh, he does a uh, he, he's a second guitarist uh, in the music portion of it. And uh, he has kind of it's almost like a fan of the opera. It's over half the face and the portion. And he goes by the uh, letter S. And the portion of that that, that it's talking about is uh, the reason it's two faced is because so many times we as Christians sometimes can be two faced and make sure that we're not doing that because. The only cross some people ever see is the one that is representative, you know, in the life that we leave, uh, lead, excuse me. So if we are sitting here and we're, you know, doing things that we shouldn't be doing, that's what people notice. And then they're going to say, boy, I don't want nothing to do with Christ. Kind of like I was before I was saved, before I got sick. So make sure you're not being two faced. And the last character, which is um, the Q character over here, um, it's like a full body suit and it's kind of a mystery character and it's got an ab abstract mask and it's got the question mark on it. Sometimes we call him Q. But the reason for that is, is to remind people it's all our choice. Whether we accept Christ, whether we walk with Christ, whether we deny Christ, it is all our choice. God has given us that choice. So what will you choose? And X I T S, you know, X I T and then S over here, that is just a way of us to spell access. There's two exits eternity with christ or, or not um life death heaven hell 
And so the question mark represents what will you choose? Are you ready for tomorrow's end? And that's what the characters uh, mean. And it's also going to be like they are, like you just said uh, earlier, you asked what a camp was. Um, this is a Christian art music project. And so we do music. And when we do music, we perform as these characters because it's not about us. We'll give testimony about what God did for us, but it's never about us. It's not about our ego or anything like that. It's about trying to get kind of like a play on stage in a way, trying to get people to think about things. And well, why are they wearing that? Why are they doing that? What does that mean? And so it, hopefully people look deeper. And if they go to our website, it'll explain every character. Yes. And, and we're even, we got a magazine, uh, right here, which will be uploaded to the website shortly, but it explains, uh, we just released like 40 songs. With this. <laughs> Again, sometimes this stuff can seem overwhelming, but, and, and one person said, why are you making all this stuff up? And I said, I'm not making it up. God's been really good to yes. us and we've been blessed to get to do this. Go check it out. I promise I'm not lying, but, um, it's really cool because everything's going to be explained. Everything's supposed to point to Christ. And so anyways, when we play, we're these characters and uh, but it doesn't stop at the at the shows. Like I just said, we released back. Um, we put it act out actually on First Fruits this year, uh, which is a biblical feast and stuff that they that Christ did. And they did an Old Testament and all this stuff. And we put it on First Fruits because Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection. Paul yes. talks about it and all of that. And uh, anyway, so we released 40 songs at once. And somebody said, well, why did you do that? And I said, well, why not? <laughs> Um, we, we had the material and we wanted to make sure that it was all encompassing to where people could really dive in um, to where if you like it, man, you can keep on digesting this for days or weeks or even maybe a month or two and really get into it and make people think about their walk with Christ. I always tell people there's two types of people we're trying to reach people that have turned away Christ because of the falseness they've seen from people that are quote unquote Christians. And we're wanting them to reevaluate and say, you know what, did I really turn a perfect Christ away or did I turn flawed people's ways, yeah. you know, away? So that's the first person we're trying to reach. And the second person is the the flip side of that. The people that identify as Christian, we live in a, you know, a generation where people want to say what they identify as. So, we, you know, uh, if you identify as Christian, but no fruit, you have no fruit that would showcase Christ in any of your life. I can tell you all day long, I'm a apple tree. But if you see me sprouting oranges, it doesn't add up. And it's saying, please reevaluate your life. Make sure that you're um, showcasing Christ in what you do. Because again, the only Christ people ever see is the one that's sometimes in the life that you lead. So just make sure of that. So that's number two. And uh, so the, the back to the songs real quick. The 40 songs you release, if you look in scripture, the 40 appears a lot. You get, uh, you know, you get the uh, 40 days, a whole bunch. You get the 40 years. You get the first three kings of Israel. They're, they're all 40 years. You get Christ, you know, 40 days, you know, being tempted and all that. You get you get all these, you know, hit, hit him in the wilderness. You get all these things. You get Israel having to be in the wilderness for 40 years. You get all these different things. And I was like, well, that's a pretty, you know, massive number to where you can put a lot of information in. And so... We, we did that. And the point of that is, is to be, like each, each, it's got a 10, like uh 10 song section for each. So there is split in fours even. And if you go to the website, it'll explain the different colors. Sometimes we have the white mask and paint. Sometimes it's red. Sometimes it's black. Sometimes it's even this scratchy uh, business that, that, that we play with. And they all represent something different. And if they go to the website, they can check all that out. But the point is, is to try to make as much uh, media out there to where people can really dive in. Like we have a song called Rubik's Cube, actually. It's part of, which I'm about to get to. It's part of uh, Tetralogy uh, Volume 2. And it's talking about, if you look at your life like a cube, like a Rubik's Cube. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? On this side, it says pride. Then you got love. I don't know if you can see it, but lust, greed, envy, and sloth. And there's more sins and stuff. But the point is, just to try to give a, a visual. So, you know, you get saved and stuff. And you accept Christ. Well, guess what? You're still st struggling with greed and lust. So you keep on moving, the, try to move those out of your life. Oh, and, wow. you, and you keep on moving it around. Well, guess what? The more sin you move out of your life, it's going to be so much clearer to see Christ. Oh, wow. You know, I'd be the guy sitting there taking the stickers off, um, <laughs> rearranging it, rearranging it that way. I want to get to one of the songs in just a minute, but I really okay. want to encourage you with something that the Lord was showing me because what you're doing really made me think. First of all, it made me think if you actually sleep with the, the amount of work that you put <laughs> into this project. But it took me to Mark chapter 13 at verse 10, where Jesus said to his disciples, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. Mm -hmm. And really, it's kind of interesting because 
his disciples at this time were asking him, when is tomorrow's end? When mm -hmm. is the last time, you know, when are mm -hmm. we going to be in the last days? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it also took me to second Timothy chapter four, verse two, and I'm going to combine these two where it says, preach the word. Well, when you take a look at what it means to preach, it means to communicate with conviction. It says nothing about a pulpit. It says nothing about a church sermon, three points in a poem or a mm -hmm. certain style. And then the preaching or the publishing, it means to formally proclaim. As a matter of fact, preaching, uh, the Greek word for it is kerusa, which means to announce a message publicly with conviction. So you don't need a pulpit to preach. And what you're doing, literally, like with the comic books, you're preaching through the comic books. You are preaching through the music because... For us to get to those last days, when Jesus is talking about uh, the gospel being published among all nations, he's not just talking about countries with borders. He's talking about different types and different groups of people, not necessarily, um, not necessarily a country. And when the gospel reaches all these different types of people that wouldn't necessarily walk into a church, well, that's when we've reached literally tomorrow's end. Let's talk about one of the songs um, on there. And I really like this song for two reasons. It's, it's got a great sound, a great message, um, but it's a lot of different genres all wrapped up into one. And it shows the complexity of what you're doing. It's not like you threw together 40 novelty songs, you know, and put it out real quick. Um, the title of the song is Card of the King. What is the message of this song? The message is, um, well, there's a line in it where it talks about the dead man's hand in poker. You know, it's the aces and eights, the dead man's hand and stuff. And it was trying to get uh, people to understand that if you do not, uh, it, like if you watch the video and stuff that we have that we just put out, um, it actually, it's a part of act one and uh, the, the video serial. But if you actually watch it, there's somebody with a, with a card that has crossed. And there's somebody with the, you know, and then they also have the dead man's hand. And the point is, everybody's got the dead man's hand. The only way that you get out of that is with Christ. And so that's really where the song uh, comes, like what it's talking about. And it's talking about our own ways will always lead to death. The world's ways will always lead to death. But if you seek Christ and if you really choose him, um, just kind of like yeah, you choose, you know, you choose a card in a deck or something. The only difference is you get to see this card. You get to see what it represents. You get to know this, you know, that Christ gave you the free choice and he gave you the gift of grace and he gave you all these things, but you, we still have to choose him. And if we're having the, you know, the the dead man's hand, so to speak, or Christ, why in the world would we choose our ways? Because our ways are always going to lead here, but Christ is always going to lead to salvation. And we even, actually to go along with the song, uh, we wasn't really talking about it, but it's a good segue. We actually have a card game that's called Card of the King that uh, goes, goes along with the song. And it comes and it actually ties in with the, uh, another song. It's it's a video in the, the serial called Dive Die. And kind of like it goes along with the Rubik's Cube. It's a it's a piece of, you know, a die, a piece of dice. And it's got life on one side and in red and all the other six sides say death. And it's saying, how will you cast your die of die? And this comes with the card game and stuff to uh, anybody that's interested. But th the point is, and I want to say this because I'm not making a sales pitch, even though it sounds like it. I will <laughs> tell you, if you want physical copies of our stuff, yes, we'll have to charge because we're, we're not funded by anybody or anything like that. We do it all. We've actually sold our own stuff to try to get this going. That's how much we believe in it. We're wanting to be you know, good stewards and make sure we're doing our part. So uh, if you want a physical copy, we'll have to charge you. However... All this stuff will be a free, free. All the stuff that we offer, the comics, the music, the magazine, um, the card game, the board game we're going to be getting to later on. It's <laughs> what, what, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to print it out and you'll have to cut it out yourself and you'll have to either, you know, make your own dice or something like that. But all of it will be free so that because we're not after the money. We're not after your money. We're hoping that these things will help you make you think about your relationship with Christ, making sure you're being careful with your witness and realizing that, you know, if, if some people know you're a Christian, guess what? You're witnessing whether you think you are or not. If you're having right. a good day and you're treating people awesome, you're being a witness. If you're having a bad day and you're treating people awful, you're still being a witness, just a bad one. So again, just these things are to make us think about our individual walks with Christ and all this stuff will be free. And I always tell people, 
Um, cause sometimes people say, Oh, can we do something else? You know, or what something like, how can we help you again? We're not after your money. If you want to support us, you could buy a physical copy, but if you just want to check it out, we, uh, within the coming months, all this stuff will be downloadable. Um, you asked mentioned that about sleep while ago to get everything going. We've not got to put everything on the website yet, but that ain't because we're holding out. It's just, there's not enough hours in the day to put yeah. it all on there at once, but it will be all available. And, but that's what card of the King is about. It's about choosing Christ over the dead man's hand, which is where all of us was before he was on the cross and paid the price for our sins. And so why in the world would we not choose Christ? And would we go back to our own ways? Yeah. Let's go ahead and check out the video and this track, Card of the King, by Tomorrow's End.
That is extremely well produced. You know, when I watch that, I see you doing in a very redeemed fashion what, uh, oh, it's, it just drives me nuts when I see it. It, it just, it, it's a redeemed version of what Ghost and Tobias Forge is trying to do with his project, with all the characters that he's got, mm -hmm. the drama, the play, where he's attention, uh, drawing attention to the darkness. You're drawing the attention to the light. And I also see with the masks, it's very similar to what I've heard Corey uh, Taylor from Slipknot say is the reason why they wear the masks is so they can escape and get themselves out of the music mm -hmm. and the attention be the music. And that's what you're doing in a redeemed fashion and but here's the thing is you're not trying to copy it you're your own unique it's a very unique sound you're so outside of the box how have people received you being so different and so unique a very good question um usually um which is works in our favor like i said before the whole thing about tomorrow's end is having people take a second look whether that's people who has turned away christ take a second look or whether that's people that are supposed to already you know identify as christian taking a second look well usually what happens if we're playing and somebody isn't familiar with us they take a second look mm -hmm. and uh so it actually has helped in many ways and uh, the cool thing is um if people ever have questions when they see it, they're like, Hey, that looks maybe, maybe that looks dark or maybe that looks weird and stuff that actually just creates an opportunity to witness and to explain, guess what? I can explain what every single thing means, show you a biblical reason for doing all these things, explain that Christ taught in parables, explains, you know, all these different things. And uh, so whenever somebody, if they do react like, well, that's just a little weird, then I, it creates an opportunity. And the same thing, if somebody like looks at it and says, oh, that's cool, but they don't even understand the message, uh, same thing. You get to, uh, an opportunity to witness and like, well, I'm glad you think, you know, it looks cool. Like if you notice all the colors are red, white, and black. Oh, yeah. which, <laughs> and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's like that in the comic and, and everything that we do. And the reason is for, you know, you have black represents sin, white represents the purity of Christ, and red represents the only way we get there, which is through his blood. So uh, e everything's got layers upon layers. And um, this is it to, again, to make us look good or anything like that. It's all to point to Christ because if people keep on getting into this stuff and they check it out, the whole purpose, like you, there's no secret message or something where people are going to say, oh, well, this is really about, you know, Nathaniel or this is really about, you know, hey, that's my wife or anybody else's name that's in the in the project. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, well, actually, these deeper layers point again to Christ. They point to another teaching. They point to another, you know, uh, more emphasis on actually walking with him. He Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. He doesn't say, you know, just believe in him and do whatever you want the rest of your life. He says, imitate me as I yes. imitate Christ. And yes. it's just one thing that's lost kind of in today's time period where a lot of people say, well, I believe in, you know, in the Lord and stuff. Say, well, you know, there's things in scripture where it says even the demons believe, yet they shudder. Uh, if, if we truly believe, we should be making sure we're walking it out. Not that you're ever saved by works or anything like that. That's impossible. We're saved by grace and faith alone. What the works do, it's not the root of your salvation. It's the fruit. If you are mm -hmm. saved, you will, as a byproduct, have works. Yeah. And what I see you guys as is a, a, a tangible aid to helping people see Christ and what the message of the Lord is. And yeah, people may say that what you're doing is a little out there and a little weird, but you go back and you take a look at the prophets of the Old Testament. Dude, they were weird. OK, <laughs> I mean, you had one of them walking around buck naked for what, a year okay, yeah. about something that had nothing to do with Israel, but Egypt. Mm -hmm. Then you had one that was laying on his side, uh, smelling burnt camel dung or burnt feces. And then you had one that was instructed by God. Oh man, I could see the discernment videos on this now. Instructed by God to go marry a prostitute. Hey, mm -hmm. go marry that prostitute named Gomer. And uh, yeah. you know, that's exactly what I want you to do. Hey, we're going to have to take a quick commercial break. We've got an awesome announcement to make, and we're going to be right back because I want to ask you a little bit more about the videos. But uh, we're really excited for our friend from uh, Millennial Reign, uh, Dave Harvey. He's got something and he wanted me to share this with everybody tonight. This is an awesome announcement.
That's right. On October 29th at the Arlington Music Hall, Arlington, Texas, we've got two great bands. We've got Petra, their 50th anniversary reunion tour 50 years and you know dude petra is the one that paved the way for you to do what you're doing right now and not only petra but our friend dave harvey from millennial rain they are going to be on stage with them and that's going to be at the arlington music hall and you can get the tickets at arlington music hall dot net now if david's watching or any of the members of millennial rain i am curious as to know how far arlington is from McMainerberry. It, for those that have watched King of the Hill. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about um, these shows that you've done. You've played 22 st uh, states, different states in the United States. The venues that you've played at, I'm really curious, have they been mostly churches or have they been secular venues? A uh, very good question. It's actually more of a modge podge. It's kind of, it's both. Um, a lot of times if we was in town, sometimes if when it was the way we'd like to do it, we tried to play actually a church and a secular venue. That way you're hitting both audiences and people that need to hear it. And uh, so it's actually been really a mixture, probably literally, uh, probably half and half, really, um, because we probably there's probably 18 or 17 like secular venues like where when we went to those certain states it was secular but probably 17 or 18 times it we also did churches or uh youth things or jesus festivals or something of that nature so uh it's really just a mixture uh both really and for these venues that you go to what has been the wildest reaction or the strangest reaction that you've got let's say at a church um, well, the, the strange thing, which is, uh, at, at first it actually took me back a little. And to be honest, I, I actually probably, sometimes I would probably like a little bit more, uh, pushback, not, not pushback, but to a degree, like a lot of times, like when we play at a church, people just like, yeah, awesome. Awesome. And I was like, Hey, let me, but when, just when they saw us and I was like, Hey, wait a second, let, let, let me tell you what it's about first. So, you know, <laughs> let's have discernment. Like I actually, I'm not a person. I have no pride when it comes to that. I don't, I don't want people just saying, Oh, that's right. Because they're up on stage. No, right. let's, let's make sure that what I'm saying is correct. And then if that's the case, then need cheer and stuff makes, you know, so sometimes we saw a little bit of that and then it was the opposite at the, um, at the secular venues, which it really, it, it just was weird how it was. Usually they would sit there like this. And then as I started giving testimony and stuff, they'd start clapping and then they would start getting into it. But it was the reverse for most of the churches we played at. It was weird. They was cheering first and the other one was like cheering later oh, wow. on. So okay. it, was, it was just a unique experience. And uh, that's why I always tell people like discernment is, you know, make sure that you know what you're, you know, listening to and stuff. And not that we was doing anything wrong or anything. That was the whole reason we was there in the first place. It's just uh, ask questions, because if you're telling the truth, you can withstand a thousand questions. If you're telling a lie, you're eventually going to crumble about the fifth or sixth question. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And discernment is one of those things that needs to be practiced. It's not something that you're going to, you know, it is a gift that we're given of God, mm -hmm. but it has to be fine tuned and it has to be practiced. You know, I've heard that at uh, church uh, churches before where the pastor is preaching something and people think he's going somewhere with it, yeah. but it's not. And, and oftentimes we're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's not where I'm not going where you think I'm going with yeah. this. So I do have to ask the question uh, with the comic books and everything wow. that you do when you were growing up, were you into comic books? Was that something that was uh, exciting for you? A hundred percent. Yeah, I grew up. Uh, I love I love comic books. Uh, my dad collected them when he was younger. And then so he passed that on to me. And he's like, hey, you know, and I grew up like in the time period of where like the I guess heyday of animation too, like where you had like uh, Ninja Turtles, X-Men cartoon, the Batman cartoon, all these things. And then those things made me like, well, where'd these come from? And they was like, oh, those, those are comics. I actually have some. So I check out my dad's books. And then I was like, oh, so I got into that. And yeah, so I'm, I was a humongous fan of that and stuff. And that's one reason that because uh, because if you look at like what's dominating cinema right now, it's comic book movies and stuff. So again, like I said earlier about the visual representation of stuff and having a visual. Um, so if, if people like the music and stuff, awesome, because the message is there. If they can see the, one of the videos, we actually just released uh, Act 1 and 2 of our, tw it's going to be 21 episode video serial. Act 1 and 2 is out right now on YouTube uh, where they can go and watch episodes 1 through 12. They're actually a throwback because like I told you at the front of this, uh, we're not funded by anybody or anything like that. It's just all 
what God has made a way for. And I, again, we've sold stuff and done things to try to get the word out there. So I was a big fan of like old cinema too and stuff, like just the old Republic uh, movie serials and stuff, like of the 30s and 40s and even early 50s. And so the point of that was, I was like, well, we don't really have what I could envision as like for a TV show or a movie or anything like that. But the serials, they did stuff on the cheap and stuff. And I was like, well, I think we could be unique and do something with that. So we created what we call the video serial. And it's just music videos that all, when you watch all 21 together, it'll tell one complete story, but they're in four different acts. So it's like different paths that you can go on and stuff. And so act one and two are out right now. People can check them out. They're free and they're on YouTube. Uh, they're even on our website where the links are and everything. But that's the the video portion of all this stuff. But like you was talking about the comics, the characters, it's a totally different universe, like where it doesn't have anything to do with the videos. It just further explores the themes of all the 40 songs we release so like right now we have issue one two and three that are that are released um they're on our website and stuff and like i said uh, if you want a physical copy you know and support us that's awesome you can you can purchase it but if you don't have it or you don't want to do that and you just want to check it out that's more important than giving us anything so they will be uh, free options where you can just go on there and read it here shortly um that's something we're tr still trying to get set up where you can maybe either download a P pdf or we'll just put all the pages on there and you can just literally read them off the website um but the point is if you don't like the music, go try, check out the videos. If you don't yeah. like the videos or the music, check out the book. If you don't like that, like I said, we got a card game. Maybe <laughs> you like games. Um, <laughs> but the first quarter of next year, we will have a board game that we are releasing. Um, that's going to be that's going to be a companion piece to the to the comic books. And um, then if you don't like that, we have a stop motion project. The guy that draws the comics is an awesome artist and a brother in Christ and a great friend. I'm very close to him. Me, me and him are. Uh, and he's actually made us actually custom like figures and stuff that we'll be posting. And the reason for this is like it's action figures and stuff. And he made them of the characters and the things that oh, appear wow. in the comic and story. And we're going to be doing a stop motion project at first quarter of next year, too, that my uh, sister-in-law is going to help with. And we're really going to try to again. So if you if you don't like the music or the videos or the comic or the card game or the board game, we're, we're going to have a stop motion project. If you don't like that, I have an awesome. Um, Another, another awesome artist, uh, he's an animator down in Panama, uh, the country, not, not, the, not the city. And uh, he's actually making us an animation. Um, we're, we're partnering and doing something with that to where there'll be, it's going to be micro episodes and it'll be an eight minute animated short uh, story um, that explains all these characters. And uh, again, we have, there's even more things that we have on the horizon and stuff. And that's not to mention just when I heal up, getting back on the road and providing a show that's memorable. I always tell people and stuff, if you're going to try to, you know, give people a message, well, especially if you're in a secular venue, you better have a show that is going to warrant their attention to where yeah. they're actually going to, because we live in a, you know, a time where everybody's on their phone. Guess what? If you don't, you know, if you don't get their attention in, you know, 10, 15 seconds, they're going to be back on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, yeah. Instagram. So we're developing a show for uh, when I'm uh, for next year to where if you go and see us, it's going to be dynamic. It'll be different. And even if you hate us, you'll be like, well, I, I'll never, I won't forget that. I might not like it, but I won't forget it. But if you do like it, it's going to get people hopefully to go to the website, to dig into what tomorrow's end is about, to see that it's all about Christ and um, get people back into the Bible. And one of the most useful tools we found is BibleHub.com because how many translations of scripture is out there? You know, I love Bible Hub. I, <laughs> I'm on that every morning when I wake up. I'm on Bible Hub. <laughs> yeah, me too. And uh, it's, it's a great uh, service. And when I, I actually put this in the front of our magazine that explains our songs and somebody read it and said boy do you have a partnership with them and i said that's above my pay grade i don't know who started this i don't know who did this no the reason i'm, I'm promoting it we have nothing to do with the bible hub is because it's been such a useful tool and whenever you have people like arguing like over opinions and stuff well guess what in the end opinions don't matter when that's right. but bible hub you know it's got the same stuff every scripture is is uh you know uh translated from so if you're in the new testament it's usually greek um if you're in the old testament it's usually hebrew or aramaic well if you have a question about a verse or which exactly translations right on that specific verse you can go to the greek you can go to the hebrew the aramaic whatever and you can see what it literally translates to and it's a great useful tool and uh, that, that's the whole point of tomorrow's end is just get to get people back into the word to get people to make sure that they are ready for tomorrow's end because guess what whether you're you know whether you're sitting here watching this 13 years old or whether you're 93 years old, everybody, you know, passes away. 
everybody is going to have a, you know, into their tomorrow, so to speak. Everybody will have tomorrow's in. And the point is, make sure that you're ready, because at the end, the only relationship that's going to matter is our relationship with Christ. And make sure it's not just a, you know, something, you know, you give uh, lip service to. Make sure it's literally a relationship, not just a religion you claim, but make sure it's a relationship and it's a covenant that you are truly in and trying to walk out again the best you can because you love Christ. Not because not for salvation, but because you love Christ, you want to do what he says. That is very well said. And to close out tonight, I'd like to decree in Jesus' name that what you just said is going to go throughout the waves of the internet and throughout the world that people will watch this and hear this. What you're doing is genuine. Dude, you're making, I, I feel like a sluggard watch, you know, I'm excited about all the stuff we got going on over here. I'm like, how does he do this all? Yeah. What? I don't know what you're putting in that coffee over there, man, but uh, I, I need to get me some of that juice. So, Hey, if somebody wants to get the comic books, the board game, hmm, let those cry board game. Deb, make note of that, please. Um, that we're going to do that. But, um, um, how, how do they get this? Where can they find the stuff? We've just got a few seconds left. Uh, tomorrowsin.com. That's tomorrow's with a Z. So it's tomorrowsin.com. And if they go under the store tab, it'll have all the stuff that we offer, the, the CDs, the comics, the card game. It'll have, when we get released the board game, it'll be on there. Um, and again, uh, if anybody wants to support us, you know, purchase a physical copy, we'll do it. I always make the joke when I'm on these podcasts that all this stuff will also be available for free if you don't have the money. Because, again, we want you to have the message. We're not trying to line our pockets. That's not our goal here. Um, the only thing that we can't give away for free is the T-shirts. So unless we get digitized and are in the matrix, the T-shirts, uh, we can't give you a free a digital T-shirt. But other than that, it's all going to be free. All the comics, music all that. But if you do want to support us and you do enjoy what we're doing, please. Yeah. That, that, that always helps, you know, just, just, you know, purchase that and always tell people if you like it, tell a friend, if you hate it, tell an enemy. And they'll even throw in a free set of Ginsu knives too. Remember those commercials back in the eighties? I, I, I do. Yeah. Where they could cut through, cut through a can or a carburetor or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The carburetor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Boy, I believe everything. I, you need discernment for that people. A Ginsu knife cannot cut through a carburetor. Hey, we're going to be back next week. And I'm really excited because we have Alyssa who's going to be with us. That's going to be an awesome uh, addition. And then, on the 27th of October, we've got Adelaide with us, and we're going to start making Get Revelation Rock Fest announcements. But until next week with Alyssa, peace out and rock on. And thank you, Nathaniel. Just hold on while we close out. Lithoscry.com.